everybody's doing well. Uh, you know, I've been, the devil started getting me to things and things that I know they're not true. Uh, this past few days, for some reason, have been really hard for me. Wife stuff related. But I want to start reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And I'm going to start reading from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that, may, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that, you, that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experience in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. You also must help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. Uh, I've he I heard in a teaching a while ago pastor used this um, the scripture to end the, the first part of his teaching and his teaching was called God is going to do it again and one of the things he said at the end was he said I've had people come to my office and tell me you know what my marriage is dead it's over and he's like really well so is Jesus but God raised him up so he could raise your marriage up the same thing applies to your finances, your uh, familiar relationships with your siblings or uh, uncles, aunts, all that. Whatever situation that we are facing that seems like it's dead, we got to remember that God raised Jesus up from the dead so he could raise that situation too. Yeah. And I was thinking about that on the on the drive here from my house. <clears throat> and I know that my reward's coming soon. Amen. And no matter what continues to be thrown against me, I know where I stand. I know what God has told me, what he's promised me, and that's what's going to happen. Amen. That's all I have to share today. I prepared the, in the last 10 minutes. Praise <laughs> the Lord. So, if anyone has any prayer requests or testimony, you have Tammy.
would have. She wanted a hug, but she, I reached my arms mm -hmm. out and just, she grabbed my hand and she just knew that somebody cared. And I told her I'd be happy to care for her and her little child and that everything's going to be all right. So I'm asking that you pray with me, that not for me, but that she feels loved and she knows that God reached out to her and that everything is okay and it does improve um, for his glory yes. and to draw her in because so many people feel so lost and that they, she said, I don't have anyone to tell this to or to share this with. Um, so Jesus loves her and he does care. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, Tim. testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you. So our conversation is what how we relate, you know, how we relate to other things. So what he's what he's saying here is they're rejoicing in the testimony of what we know, not what we see. Exactly. And it's not through fleshly wisdom, because that's natural understanding that what you see, that you hear about, that you're being exposed to. But it's the grace of God. That changes our conversation. Right. It makes us say what Tim just said. It makes us say what you just said. Rather than <coughs> our conversation being doom and gloom and what the enemy is trying to tell us and what natural circumstances are telling us, by the grace of God, we have another conversation. That it's a testimony. It's it's a it's like legal testimony in court. It's accepted as legitimate, as real. Mm -hmm. And the only judge we've got to deal with is God. Mm -hmm. So I'm just I, I, I believe that exactly what you guys have just said, what Tammy said when we pray for this person, we just declare what God has said to you. That's our testimony, that's our praise, that's our conversation, and it'll change the darkness and the, the uh, lies of the enemy. Exactly. It only gets changed one way, and that's by us who have been given the authority. I was just reading in Haggai where he told Zerubbabel, he gave him this signet, which meant he gave him authority. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's given us, just like the prodigal son got the ring. That means he's got the authority of the Father. Hallelujah. What he says is like a power of attorney. Right. In the, in the spirit world, in the natural world, submit to him. You know, that's what the Bible talks about. To whom you submit, to them you are a servant. So it's not talking about sin in the sense of, you know, going out and getting drunk or doing drugs or whatever it is. He's talking about when we submit to the lies of the enemy, he becomes our master. Right. He controls us. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're submitting to the own authority of God, he's the master. He overcomes everything. He, over, he overtakes any lie, any, any complication, any hindrance that the enemy tries to Yep. That is the battle. That's what that's what faith is, is speaking the things that are not as though they are. It sounds contradictory, it sounds uh, you know counterintuitive and all that stuff. But
Father, thank you for bringing us together into this place, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the resurrection of Jesus, for the resurrection that you gave us, so that everything that seems that is in this physical world in our lives, you can lift up, you can resurrect, Father. We thank you for the word that you give us for us to declare who you are, for us to declare your praise, your power, your mercy, the authority that you have given us to speak those things that are not as though they are. Father, we declare right now that those that are in need of healing, the healing that you have declared that we have in Jesus' name is manifesting right now. We thank you, Father. We know that you're restoring those relationships that are broken. That you're providing for those that are in need of financial break. Right now, Father, know that their heart is longing for Jesus. We know that your Holy Spirit is comforting them. Their heart is open to you, Lord. Your grace and your love and your mercy. Second, we'll have a soup and salad gathering. Uh, if you can bring something good, if not, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's speak the word. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, therefore I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the Word of God. The Lord rebukes the devour for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine.
come into your presence, Lord. 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 All my heart is for your presence.
presence tonight, Lord, your manifest presence. We know that you never leave us or forsake us, but Lord, we're grateful that wherever two or more gather together, you're there in the midst of them. We sense your presence here tonight, Lord, in a very real way. And we know, Lord, that wherever you are, miracles happen. We can believe, Lord, for the greatest mountain to be moved, the greatest obstacle to be cast into the sea and for you to be triumphant in our lives and through our lives. We celebrate the victory tonight, Lord, the victory that is you in every situation, every circumstance, in every area of life. We celebrate you, Lord. You are great and truly greatly to be praised. And everybody said, praise the Lord. 
Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, everybody, being here tonight. Praise the Lord. Appreciate it. Thank you for your testimonies. Roberto, thank you for opening this evening, sharing with us. Praise the Lord. Roberto's my favorite male scripture looker upper for the screen. I said that because John will go home and tell Sheila I said the favorite, but I did say favorite male. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, it's so always interesting to me how the Lord confirms and affirms things through his word. I was thinking about what Roberto scriptures he read this evening. Praise the Lord. Just amazing how God is continually over and over uh, encouraging trying to help us to, to have confidence in every situation, in every circumstance. I mean, you know, just the testimonies we heard tonight, if, if we didn't have God, if we didn't have, if we just had the mindset of the world, imagine how depressed we'd be. Yeah. I mean, it just be throw up your hands and run to the bar or run off into the woods and blow your brains out or something crazy. You know, I mean, it just... I don't know how people, well, I, I know, I guess I understand why the world is so chaotic and crazy and, and insane in so many ways, because without God, there's no hope. I mean, there just isn't anything you can really look to ongoing that's positive, you know, that, that gives you hope, that gives you a, an expectation of something good happening. But with God, we can wake up every day and expect something good. Amen. Expect that something good is going to happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I want to I want to encourage you tonight. Let's go to uh, I, I want to read a couple of scriptures from Haggai, chapter two, uh, and we'll read verse nine first of all. And uh, see the. He says, the glory of this latter house shall be greater. Now, I understand they're rebuilding the temple here, but I, I, let's look at it in the context that God speaks to us through every scripture. And he's not just speaking about what's happening at the moment. He's also speaking prophetically. And so he's talking about, uh, know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. And you, God dwells within us. So he says, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place... Will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Yes. The Holy Spirit comes to bring not only power and anointing, but to bring peace. Yes. And that's what we heard here tonight. Where if we didn't have the Holy Spirit, if we weren't born again, we'd be saying something altogether different. We'd be looking for counseling. You know, we'd be at a psychiatrist. We'd be someplace trying to get something to give us some hope that things might get better. But God gives us peace. He, he dwells within us for that purpose. Amen. And now let's look at verse 19. Same, same chapter here. Is the seed yet in the barn? Well, that's what I heard tonight. The seed's still in the barn. Praise the Lord. Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day will I bless you. Mm. Now, there's another way that says, it has not given fruit. So fruit hasn't been born yet. Right. And even in the moment, you haven't seen the fruit of your prayers and your, your uh, testimonies, Roberto. Right. Uh, Tim, 
you all have, you guys haven't haven't seen the fruit of your faith, right? I mean, you're believing, but it isn't there. But God has given you peace, so that even though the seed's still in the barn, even though the fruit hasn't come forth yet, He's telling you from this day. Will I bless you? Praise yes. the Lord. I mean, oh, I feel that in the Holy Ghost. I, I think you ought to just Woo! claim that from yes. this day. Amen. Yes. I'm going to bless you. Praise yes. the Lord. Mm -hmm. So now from that, let's go to the New Testament. I want, to, I want to go to the book of John, chapter 14. And we'll read uh, beginning at verse 16. John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father... And he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Mm -hmm. And we'll go right on down verse, uh, through verse 20. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now he's talking to the disciples. And in fact, leading up to this, this is all in the upper room, uh, the Last Supper. It's in that in that context that, uh, that Jesus is speaking here. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, ye in me, and I in you. Yes. All right, drop down to verse 25 now, Roberto, and we'll look at verse 25 through 27. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. Remember Haggai? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Praise the Lord. Yes. So if Jesus is your advocate, mm -hmm. the law of God is now completely for you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. It's on your side, in other words. Mm -hmm. Jesus' work on the cross is transferred to your account. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Now the law of God demands your acquittal in any situation, every situation, under any circumstances, under all circumstances. Praise the Lord. Look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Praise the Lord. Yes. So this is why John calls Jesus our advocate. When he does that, he also calls him the righteous one. Mm -hmm. Now, think about this, because when we're praying for things, when we're believing God for things, this is important. This is critical. This is why we are to have peace. Because we can come to God boldly, expecting that God's going to do for us what he would do for somebody that's perfect. For somebody who has completely obeyed the law, who has been totally faithful to God yeah. in every area, Amen. right? We talked about it a little bit Sunday. With that kind of thinking, you can have your mind renewed that God is going to do something powerful and yeah. dynamic in your life because you're like Jesus. Come on. You've, you've done everything that is required in order for the blessings of God to come upon you. Look at Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 27. We don't have to go there, but just for the sake of... You know, where it talks about, if you obey all these commandments, this is what I'll do for you. You'll be the head, not the tail. You'll be blessed coming in. You'll be blessed going out. Blessed in the field. Blessed in the city. Whatever you set your hand to will be blessed. And on and on and on. There'll be no hardships, no health risk, no issues. Families will be held together. All of these things. Yes. That's what we had to look forward to because as far as God's concerned, we have totally, perfectly kept the law in Christ. Thank you, Lord. He is not only our advocate, our attorney, our comforter, amen, our peace, mm -hmm. praise the Lord, but he is righteous, the mm -hmm. righteous one. Right. 
And because he's righteous, we are the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's why John says it the way he does. So when God looks at you as a Christian, as a believer, he sees you in Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Why we should have the expectation that God's going to do for us what Jesus has coming. Yes. Praise the Lord. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So just like Jesus wasn't personally sinful, but was treated as sinful, right? Punished on the cross. Just like that, we as believers while not personally righteous and perfect, are treated as righteous and perfect by God for Jesus' sake. Yeah. This is the fundamental principle and teaching of the Bible. This is why Jesus came. So that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and expect our needs to be met. Yeah. Expect our prayers to be answered. Yeah. Expect God to move on our behalf. Yeah. So Jesus has given us this great clue here to understanding how the empowering of the Holy Spirit works. It's more than just speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a good thing because it, it opens us up to the spirit realm. But more than that, it tells us why the Holy Spirit is given to us. Let's go back to John chapter 14 and verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So even though the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, he doesn't just teach and inform us. He reminds us that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. He, that we are adopted, that we are accepted into the family of God, that we are the beloved. Praise the Lord. Yes. Look at John chapter 14, verse 20. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Verse 21. He that, that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Praise the Lord. Now, can you see the implication here? Well, the apostles couldn't. Right. And they didn't. Right. They really didn't know Jesus. Right. We know that. We know what happened at the grave, at the tomb, and so forth. He didn't, they didn't really know Jesus until he went away bodily and returned through the Holy Spirit. They were failures. Right. Right. Until the Holy Spirit came. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Amen? So it ought to be encouraging to us. It's, it's natural for us to think that, well, you know, if I'd lived in the time of Jesus, if I'd have met him, praise the Lord, if I'd have seen him face to face, if I'd have heard him speak, yeah. then I'd know him better. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not true. No, it isn't. Before Jesus died, the Holy Spirit hadn't been poured out. The Holy Spirit had not been released in the powerful way in the world the way it, the way it is today. Amen? Amen? And you, according to the scripture, can only know Jesus completely or fully through the Spirit's influence. There you go. Revelation. Praise the Lord. Now look at, let's look at this. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul gives us an insight into this. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints. Why, by this influence of the spirit, what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, which is the spirit, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, you, 
Can, do you really see the magnitude of what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives? Praise the Lord. What the Holy Spirit is offering us through Christ, or what Christ is offering us through the Holy Spirit, they're one and the same. Praise the Lord. See, as a, as a Christian, you are a spiritual billionaire. Yes. Yes. You have everything that you have need of. You have excess. You have more than enough, praise the Lord, to deal with any situation, any circumstance, anything the devil throws at you. See, it's the job of the Holy Spirit, the advocate, to argue with you in the court of your heart. It isn't just him arguing on God with God. God's already accepted this. Sure. The Holy Spirit is the advocate between you and your own conscience. Come on. Between you and your own heart. Yeah. Yeah. He argues on behalf of what Christ has done for you yes. with you. Yes. Come on. Praise the Lord. How many times have you been down to the point where you felt like, man, I just, you know, I just can't take it anymore. I can't, I can't do it. I can't handle it. And the Holy Spirit somehow begins to argue exactly. for you, exactly. with you. Uh, yes. You know, the, don't give up. There's still, the Word of God is still declaring something positive can yes. happen. Your life can be turned around. God can still move. God can still do things. Amen. That's what, that's the Holy Spirit doing that. That isn't you. That isn't just you wishing for something better. It's the Holy Spirit advocating within you. Right. Reminding you of your of your inheritance, of what you've got to come, what you should be expecting, how you should be believing. Mm -hmm. Keeps you positive, keeps yes. you expecting yes. God to move. Amen? amen. That's, that's what the Holy Spirit does. This is how powerful, yes. amen, it is. Yes, Lord. Amen? He's trying to make a case about you, about who you are in Christ. Exactly. Amen? Exactly. You're your own worst enemy. And they said that, you know... Uh, an attorney who has himself a client is a fool. Or any client who has himself as an attorney is an idiot. Right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's why he gives us an advocate. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. We need an ad we need a good attorney, praise the Lord, because yes. we'll sell ourselves down the river. Yes. Amen. Yeah. We'll cop a plea. We do. We'll do anything other than get the total victory that God wants us to have. So That's why he's given us the advocate. That's why he's given us the Holy Spirit so that we have peace. In the middle of all the chaos, and everybody else is freaking out and running around wanting to kill themselves and kill somebody else, we're going, whoa, what? this isn't over yet. Come on. It's not done. God's got a better answer for this. Amen. Praise the Lord. What's my job? My job is to listen to the Holy Spirit. Sure. Not to my own natural mind or my own carnal mind, but listen to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Our minds tell us there's no reason to continue. You know, after all, what'd she say? What's she done? Yeah, how well, long's this been going on? What did the lawyer say? What did the judge say? What did the banker say? What did the, you know... Uh -huh. That's all the natural stuff. Our job is to listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prioritize his words. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. So how do we listen better? Well, if you don't accept grace, according to the scripture, you strip the Holy Spirit of the means by which he does his work. Come on. Yeah. In other words, if you make it about you and your goodness and your perfection and your doing everything right and obeying everything right, you have just ripped... Yeah. The opportunity of the Holy Spirit to do its his job. Yes. Yes. His job is to remind you of who you are in Christ. To remind you you have an inheritance. You have an expectation of God's goodness for you. Yes. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's look at this. John chapter 14, verse 27. That's why the scripture talks about us coming together and and encouraging one another. Right. Because sometimes, even though we may hear the Holy Spirit dealing with certain situations, it's funny how you don't see the forest for the trees. You know what? It's amazing. We can be prophetic. And this is the truth. I'm not belittling this. We can have prophetic words for other people. Yes. And it's true. It is God speaking to us prophetically about somebody else. Yes. And yet, we don't hear it when God's saying it to us. Mm -hmm. Because we are immersed in the issue. Yes. 
Yes. It's hard for us to see beyond the problem. Sure. That's why he wants us to come together so that we can remind our, one another of the Holy Spirit that's working in us to encourage us and to see us receive the things that God has promised us. Yes. So here he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Because the way the world gives it, everything's got to be in perfect order. Uh -huh. The only time you can have peace in the world is whenever all the bills are paid. Uh, everybody's getting along at home. Uh, you know, the, the, you know the, 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 uh, the situations are all running smoothly. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no sickness. There's no uh, dysfunction in any way. That's the only way we ever have peace. So it's not a wonder that there's chaos in the world because there's very little peace. Because even when you get a whole lot of money, then your relationships all fall apart. Or you get the relationships together, you don't have enough money to pay the house payment. Amen. Or you get the house payment made, and you get the relationship together, and then you find out you got cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's just always, that's the way the devil works. Praise the Lord, but peace I leave with you, and my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Yes. Neither let it be afraid. Whatever it is, whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation is, don't let your heart be troubled. Focus on what God said. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to you. Amen? Don't be afraid. Amen. That's the greatest weapon of the enemy. Yes, it is. He can get you in fear. He'll, he'll bind you up to the place where you can't believe for anything except for something more atrocious to happen. Praise the Lord. All right, look at John 14, verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you'll see me, because I live, you'll live also. Yeah. We're talking about resurrection life. Resurrection life isn't something that, that is handed over to us or given to us like a ticket to ride. Uh, Amen. Resurrection life is in us. Yes. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. You already have resurrection yes. life. You have the life of God dwelling within you right now. Surging through you is, is the very God life. Amen? Yes. So we know that by the Holy Spirit. We don't know it by our intellect because our intellect will tell us other things. Uh -huh. It'll tell us we're not even saved sometimes. Right. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. But because I live, you will live also. Because I live by God's life, you'll live by God's life. Yes. Praise God. All right, 1 John again. Let's go back there to chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Uh -huh. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Right. He is the substitute. Yep. He is the one that's dealt with all of it. Amen. Yes. All right, chapter 5 now of 1 John, uh, verse 17 through 21. Man, I'm telling you, we ought to be the happiest people on this planet no matter what we're going through. No matter what's going on, we ought to still have, you know, I understand happiness goes up and down, but joy, we should have the joy of the Lord. If we really know this and understand this and believe this, man, I mean, we've got something that the, the, the billionaires of this world would pay for if they could buy it, if it could be purchased. All righteousness is, all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. How did we do that? By faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. The reason we're not sinners is because he became sin, that we might be considered the righteousness of God. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness. Uh -huh. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him, that is true. Yes. Even in his son, Jesus yes. Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Yes. Well, hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. That's us. Uh -huh. it is. Praise the Lord. 
I don't know about you, but I've got problems like everybody else does, but they don't seem near as big right this moment as they did before I got here tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because they'll, the devil tries to blow them up with his lies and with his deception and with his carnal way of getting us to look at things. And if we only could remember these things, amen, when the devil does it, we would rise above every temptation to sin, which is unbelief. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit gives us true things to think about that overcome the darkness of this life. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Praise the Lord. Now, we could, it, anybody could read these scriptures, but it doesn't have the same impact on just anybody. Right. Amen? Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you're not born again, it's just gibberish. Right. But once you become a believer, he says, we'll know. We'll know internally. Somehow we'll know. Why? Because the Holy Spirit quickens these scriptures to us and makes them alive to us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, Praise the Lord. Just like the, the Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us, the, the, the Spirit makes the Word come alive again yes. to each and every one of us in us. Yes. Jesus wakes up. Uh -huh. Amen. Not that he's asleep, but we become insensitive to the presence of God. So the Holy Spirit speaks to us, always saying, put your faith in Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit is constantly telling us. Yeah. Trust the Lord. Put your confidence in Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus. If you put your faith in the work of Christ, you can stand in any situation. You can stand in any circumstance. Bold as a lion. In spite of what everybody else is saying, you look like an idiot, amen, but you're bold as a lion because you'll declare what God has said about the situation and the circumstance. We may be meek as lambs in this world, but we are still... Lions in Christ, hallelujah. Lions of the tribe of Judah, praise the Lord. And believe me, the enemy knows your roar. We're not listening to him running around acting as though he's a lion. We are the lions. He's been defanged, hallelujah. His teeth have been pulled. He's been overcome. But we have been risen up with Christ, and in him we are the lion of the tribe of Judah. There's no animal, amen, no human, no demon, no devil that can come against us. Praise the Lord. Bold as a lion. Praise God. God sees you spotless. God sees you without blemish. Praise the Lord. And that's what Jesus was telling his disciples in the upper room. If you go back and read 12, 13, uh, uh, leading up to 14, that's the whole conversation that he's having. Let's look at, again, let's look at John chapter 14. And I want to read uh, 1 through 18. We'll just read it here. we got time because I'm about done. We'll be out of here in 10, 15 minutes. So. John 14, beginning at verse 1, and we'll read right through uh, verse 18. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus is trying to tell his disciples. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Yes. In my Father's house are many mansions. Yes. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Hmm. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but yes. by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. Yes. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Yes. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Yes. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Yes. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Yes. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Yes. And, whosoever, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, 
That will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. It's okay. We should say in Jesus' name. But that really isn't the, the motive here. The motive is that whenever we pray as born-again believers, we're praying in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. He has taken our identity as a sinner and been given to us his identity yes. as Christ. Amen? Amen. The anointed one. So, well, whosoever shall ask anything in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Yes. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes. yes. Now, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. That's right. Anything. Anything. anything everything. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. If you love me, keep my commandments. How do you keep his commandments? You love him and you love one another. Right. We're not perfect at it, but the fact that that's what, that's what we understand to be our commandment, God endorses it and, tell, and says oh, they've done it perfectly. Why? Because Jesus loved God perfectly. Yes. Jesus loved everybody else perfectly. Yes. And that's accounted to us. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Yes. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him for he dwells with you. Remember he's talking to the disciples. Jesus was with them at that time. And shall be in you. Yes. I will not leave you comfortless. Uh -huh. I will come to you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, it's the lifeline, praise the Lord, to those who failed him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Those that failed him in life. The Holy Spirit is the lifeline. Yes. And it would change these same people that were failures into the people who would, who would then in turn... Because of the Holy Spirit and the presence within them, change the entire world. It's still happening today. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Now, if that doesn't tell you what kind of power the Holy Spirit has in a person who believes in it, uh -huh. in a, the influence that it can have, yes. the life-changing, world-changing influence it can have. Yes. Listen, yes. I'll tell you, it shrinks down our individual problems. Not that they're not real. But it shrinks them down to something that we can see. Look, if Jesus could change the entire world, I believe he can handle my situation. I believe he can do this. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I believe he can make all things work together for my good. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what he does. Praise the Lord. You, Lord. Amen. Believe me. Yes. Believe in him. Yes. And receive the spirit when I'm gone. That's what he says. Yes. Believe in me and then receive the spirit when I'm gone. Listen to him. Thank you, Lord. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to you. Yes, Lord. Not the devil, not the world. Mm -hmm. Listen to what the Spirit's saying. And he'll give you peace. Yes. He'll give you power. Yes. He'll give you confidence. Yes. To believe for anything and everything that God has promised you. Thank has you. he not promised us that we and our house will be saved? Yes. yes. Has he not yes. promised that all our relationships yes. will be made whole? Yes. Amen. Amen. Has he not promised that we would be the head and not the tail, above That's and right. not beneath? That's right. Blessed going in, blessed coming out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Doesn't matter what the world's doing. They can have another housing crash. They can have another Y2K. They can have another, you know, uh, <laughs> depression. Whatever. Mm -hmm. It shall not come nigh my house. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's read this last verse and we'll close with John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Uh -huh. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Thank you, Lord. Neither let it be afraid. That's right. Don't let it be. That's right. When you start hearing those fear bells go off, mm -hmm. you listen to that other voice. Yes. That still small voice. Yes. That's saying, fear not. That's right. I am with you. Hallelujah. I'll never leave you. My word is true. Yes. I am true. I am the light. I am the way. Yes. You are more than a conqueror. Yes. You shall overcome. Yes. Because I have overcome, you will overcome. Mm -hmm. The works that I've done, greater works shall you do. Yes, Lord. Because I'm going to the Father and sending back my spirit uh -huh. to dwell within you. Yes. To give you the confidence to do whatever is required. Than a little extra. Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap.
praise the Lord. I just want to encourage you. Don't let your heart be troubled. Amen. Don't be afraid. Amen. God is with you in the power of his spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're talking about one. I know we're, we're talking three that are one. Right. But understand this. That Holy Spirit is God in, in you. Amen. Yes. In one place it's called Christ in you, the hope of glory. Another place is called you are the dwelling place of God. Another yes. place is called the Holy Spirit. Yes. You can divide it up and split it up and fractionalize it any way you want to. But Israel says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is still one. Yes. And that God is dwelling inside of you. Yes. The same God who spoke all of this yes. into existence. Mm -hmm. His life, God life, surges through us. Yes. And every once in a while, hallelujah, we feel it. Uh, Amen. We feel it, and it's almost like it comes right out of our skin. Uh, and that's just a that's just a taste, just a sample. This Holy Spirit is the seal, not only of our redemption, but of God's acceptance. God will not dwell in an unholy vessel. That's right. He cleanses it before he comes to it. Come he on. talks about it in the scripture. He said, if there's a if, if there's something uh, you know at the altar that's unclean, will the altar cleanse it? Yes. It may have been unclean until it got there. Once it gets there, it's been cleansed. That's right. Don't call what God has called holy unclean. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. If God will dwell there, God can work from there. Amen. And Amen. nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's go in faith. Let's go believing without fear, without trepidation. Let's expect miracles. Let's get up in the morning and say, thank you, Jesus, for the great work that you're going to do in my life today, the influence you're going to have, the good works that you're going to do. You're going to go before me Hallelujah. and make my path straight. Yes. Bring the high places down and the low places up. I'll yes. be walking smooth, amen, through this life uh -huh. with good things on the horizon. Always yes. good coming to me. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you all tonight. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. And that'll make you happy. You sure, Dean? Yeah, it's nice tonight. I got my nice gold brother.